Well, good morning, Kelowna. This is the AM 1150 Garden Show with Ken Selvale and Don Burnett. Uh, morning, Ken. Good morning, Don. It's, uh, it's a beautiful day out there. The weather's yeah. staying mild. It is really mild. It was uh, kind of shocking to just walk out the door this morning. There was just a very tiny skiff of ice yeah. on the windshield, hardly anything. Yeah. And we had c- winter a couple of weeks ago. Well, that's what that was. That's what that was. <laughs> that yep. little blip. Uh, you bet. Uh, but we haven't had the tips of the week, and that's what we're going to do right now. That's right. Well, welcome to the AM 1150 Garden Show, and this is our tips of the week. Book your seat on the most popular garden bus tour in the valley. Time is running out, so call SunWest Tours today. We'll talk more about that. That's our trip to the uh, Seattle Garden Show. That is the uh, Northwest Flower and Garden Show, which is the second largest flower and garden show in North America. It's a big, uh, as Ed Sullivan said, it's a really big shoe. Oh, yeah. And my plant of the week is the Crossula, the jade plant. Well, of course, there's lots of different jade plants mm-hmm. and lots of... But the common large leaf jade plant is my plant of the week. An easy plant to look after in the home. And, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Especially in the wintertime. In the wintertime, yeah. There you go. I also have a tip and a plant this week. And my tip of the week is that uh, you should always just check your outdoor temperatures before transporting plants from point A to point B during the winter months. If you're uh, well above freezing, you shouldn't have any issues. But if you are getting close to freezing or just below freezing, be wise to put it into a plastic bag and inflate the bag by blowing into it and then tying a knot in it. And that will uh, keep the uh, a little bit of warm air around the plant while you're doing your transport. Keep it alive. Prevent it from getting frozen. All right. Now, my plant of the week this week is the balsam fir. And I just love balsam fir. It's just a beautiful tree and one of the best Christmas trees, I find. Uh, very, very fragrant and just a lovely thing. Um, there are several different types of fir trees that you'll see in, in uh, your local garden centers that they will, will be sold. And uh, some of them are very cool. I love the noble fir as well, the Fraser fir. Any of the furs are usually really nice Christmas trees and super fragrant. That's my tips and plants for this week. Remember to check ColonaGardens.com. Right on, Ken, and you've missed my favorite. What's that? The con color fur. The con color. Yeah, you don't find so many of those, but there are a few if you know where to look, right? Uh, um, yeah, Ted Corbett has still a few of those. Yeah. But uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, Christmas is around the corner, and so we can start talking about it now. Um, I always like to get past Remembrance Day and that sort of thing before yeah. we hype up Christmas. But uh, here yeah. we are. Here we are, yeah. A couple of weeks from now, Santa will be coming down in his helicopter to violence. Yeah. He doesn't slide down a chimney, though. Yeah. No, he doesn't slide down a chimney. He's too fat. Oh. I used to wonder how he... My my Auntie Kay McLeod had, um, in her home, their chimney came up, but there was three little tiny chimlets coming out the top. Oh, yeah. Santa blocker. uh, Santa blocker. I told told my mom, I said, how's Santa going to get down their chimney? Ross and Kathy aren't going to have any presents. Mm-hmm. But they had presents, and it was magic. He, somehow he got down those little skinny little chimneys. Yeah, maybe he's got one of those vibrating things that he puts on his, his belly. Yeah, you know, just one of just before Christmas, does, and he yeah. slims down, and he's ready to go. Yeah, does some calisthenics. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Or maybe just some of that uh, wire goo they use for... You know, yeah. lubricating wires. Maybe he's yeah. got something like that that he puts in the chimney to squeeze through. Who knows? Yeah. Well, it's a bit of a, a dismal, dismal day today, Ken. I, I've, I've had a cell phone since 1992. Yeah. We had the old, remember the old cell phone Burnett's had? We had yeah, the, it came in a suitcase. <laughs> well, that that one, that was the, the, the truck phone, right? Yeah. Then we got that, the new, the big cell phone. The which, phone. which it was like a It was like a Kleenex box. It was yep. that big. Yeah, a small Kleenex box. It was it was huge. <laughs> it weighed about oh fifteen yeah. pounds. Couldn't you, you know if you had it on you, you couldn't hide it. It was good as a backup weapon if someone yeah. ever attacked you. You could whack them with your cell phone and knock them unconscious. Uh, well, yeah. In all those years that I've had cell phones, I've never lost one, except for yesterday. I lost oh. my cell phone. So I don't know what to do. I I don't know. I'm going to get a new cell phone. Obviously, if I can't find this one in the next day or two. I don't think I will. Go to your it. cell phone provider. They have methods. I they, they well, we're going to work on that. But but mm. the but but I'm just qu- one question I have for the listening audience and you, if you can answer me right away. If you lose your cell phone, 
I mean, it's, it's awful. You lost a lot of information on it, pictures and things like mm. that. I can think of lots of pictures that I've got on there that I haven't transferred to my computer yet, mm-hmm. like a picture of our hostas that were turning color this winter mm. or this fall, and I just they were so beautiful. And I took these. Eh, I'm not going to not going to go there. Not even going to think of the pictures that are on there. But I'm just wondering if you go and get a new cell phone, can you keep your old number? Yes, of course. Good. Oh, thank goodness. Because, I mean, I'd have to change my business cards and my everything. It's technology, Don. They just go flick a switch and you got your number back. But they can actually find your phone for you, too. So I would call your your, uh, guy, like, right away and get Mm -hmm. on it because they will locate it. They can at least find where it was last. Mm -hmm. So there you go. It's just it could be still sitting up there at the property wherever you were. Yeah, yeah, it you could know, be. In a bush, you bent over to pick up a rock or to put a stake yeah. in the ground and flip mm. out it came out of the pocket. Sounds like you've been there. Uh, anyway, yeah, but let's... I've, I've managed to find it though again. <laughs> let's not worry yeah. about Don Burnett's cell phone right now because, no, you know, it's it's not, as show. I said to Don last night, it's not the end of the world. Somebody hasn't died or got sick or something. It's, nope. just, it's a damn cell phone, you know? Yep. So that's, there we go. It was actually about time, though, Don, I must say, you had that phone for a long time. <laughs> it was getting a little crusty. Uh, the comments that I've got about that cell phone are something else. <laughs> and, you know, I take a picture, and the picture's fuzzy, and you go, why? And you look at the lens on the camera, it's just gobbed in there with junk. Yeah, dirt. Dirt and, and stuff. Yeah, fingerprints. Yeah, okay. mm-hmm. Well, there you go. <laughs> okay, what was Elaine Cameron doing today? Oh, first of all, we're going to invite your calls because uh, you can stop all this chatter if you would like and, mm. and get your interests covered by giving us a call. 250-862-2525. That's to get through to Ken and I today. Um, we, we're here to answer your gardening questions. That's what it's all about. So um, I wonder what Elaine Cameron was doing at this time of year. Let's have a look. Oh. Back in time. That's very good, Grinder. That was really <laughs> timely and good. Mm-hmm. November 17th, 1950. Snow melted, she says. Covered Christmas roses with box frames and leaves. That's your hellebores. Mm-hmm. Cut down hollyhocks again and rake the leaves from the lilac at the back door. Nice. That's what she did that day. November 18th, she says it's colder. Hauled the garbage to the compost. Cut dead leaves off her chrysanthemums in the house and rearranged seven pots that were in bloom. I've got pictures of those, actually. Really? Yeah. It's not my cell phone, either. I've got them right (laughs) here in my computer. (laughs) (laughs) Ouch. Very nice with Ray... By Ray, Orange Ray, White Ethel Alston, and two Sheila Page, Yellow, uh, Yellow Ray, Yellow Lemon Spider. These are all names of mums, eh? Yeah. Kind of cool. Spider mums. Spider mums, yeah. Or at least that one. Yeah, November 19th, Hard Frost. Dead chrysanthemums <laughs> <laughs> from vases to compost. <laughs> that was, boy, that took. Very little time mm-hmm. to n- nail them. And hauled wood. Okay, well, that's up to November 19th, and we'll, we'll talk about a little bit later on about Elaine Cameron and what she did. Mm-hmm. Elaine Cameron was, uh, was just one of those people that really knew what she was doing in the garden yeah. and had so many people come to visit her in the garden. I've got pictures of her in her garden. Uh, amazing. Yeah, she was a real mm-hmm. gardener. She gardened every single day. She yep. managed her garden. She wasn't a fake gardener. She was nope. a real gardener. Real gardener. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Ken, uh, do you know that Donna and I went and had our wedding rings resized and know. polished up? Here, I'll flash it for you. Mm-hmm. Flash in my ring. Um, yeah, resized and polished. And uh, what a great job he did. Uh, it was uh, a gentleman at uh, Sven's Jewelry uh, in uh, Mission Park. Sven Sandberg's Jewelry at the Mission Park Mall. And he mm. did a very great job of resizing. We've both grown the same amount. Mm. Like, it, it's relative, but I mean, we both, mm-hmm. he had to, he, the same little chunk of gold that he had to put in my ring just to, to make it bigger, to make fit my fat old hands. Yep. Um, same size for Donna. Oh, interesting. And so, uh, yeah, so it was... Uh, 
pretty cool and you very guys are eating re- the very same reasonable. Uh, same food I eating think. the same food she's mm-hmm. cooking the same food for for me for many years anyway we've had a, a wonderful time wearing our new rings i took my ring off years ago because i was worried of getting it caught when i was landscaping and, mm-hmm. and building and you know uh, i was afraid to get a, a neighbor of ours i don't want to scare anybody here but a neighbor of ours the child, he was playing basketball in the hoops outside and caught his ring on the hoop and ripped oh. his finger right off. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ouch. Went to do a, a dunk, yeah. you know, and caught the ring yeah. and fell down. Yeah, and... I caught mine on the back yeah. of a pickup truck when I jumped out of the truck. Oh, of course, yeah. it wasn't uh, wasn't moving, thank God, but it give it a good yank. Yeah, and it bent yeah. the ring into a point on the bottom, <laughs> yeah, which which rendered the ring almost useless. Yeah, well, there you go. So I, t- I, I, I was afraid. And then I went to put it back on again, and my f- little fat finger was too big for my ring. Ah, so now mm-hmm. we're both wearing our rings. It's very cool. I look at this, and I think I remember picking those out 45 years ago, Ken. Mm-hmm. Whew, 45 years. Anyway. I think we're going to take a short break here, but uh, we do invite your calls, 250-862-2525. We're going to talk gardening. Well, we're back with you. Uh, Saturday morning, it's a beautiful day. It's not real sunny, but boy, it was nice yesterday for a while. Um, I got to tell you, uh, my daughter... Uh, Lindsay worked up in uh, Dawson Creek for a while. A couple of seasons she was up there, a couple of years, a couple of winters. And I just saw on, or heard on the news yesterday, we were seven above here and they were 22 below there. Just yeah. just thought I'd bring that to your attention, Ken. Yeah. Don't be moving to Dawson Creek. Well, it should be, uh, it should be that cold. It shouldn't be any warmer than that up there, I would say. Well... <laughs> I know. If it was warmer than that, I think I'd be more concerned. Do you do you really do you often wonder? I mean, right now, uh, I have the age I'm getting now, our winters bother me. Yeah, I I, I do. It, you know, leave winter up at Big White. Keep yeah, you can just drive up the road there yep. anytime you want. Go go visit winter. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just saying, uh, yeah, we're we're pretty lucky here. We're pretty. I've got a uh, I've got a beautiful petunia basket out front. Well, it's a it's a it's a uh, it's a uh, Calabrocoa basket up, up in front of my house. I have I had a really nice picture of it, <laughs> but yeah. it's, it's gone with my cell phone. Um, and um, yeah, beautiful plant still there. To, you know, we actually gave it a little bit of triple twenty yesterday. <laughs> Why not? Still going. Yeah, still looking good. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, it'd be nice to get into December and be able to send our friends in Alberta pictures of our bedding plants still looking good. <laughs> Banana's gone. The banana froze, froze down. Yeah. Yeah. It froze down on that one frosty evening we had a couple of weeks ago, which yeah, I thought, the, I thought might be, that was our winter, you know? Yeah. That was about a minus four, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. That Celsius. nailed it. That yeah. nailed. It was good up to then and it got nailed and, uh. Mm-hmm. What I did with the banana this year, because last year I um, I just covered it in, in, in sawdust and leaves and that. Uh, and in the spring when I took it out, it, everything looked rotted. It looked really mm-hmm. rotted. And it took a real long time for it to finally shoot. And one day I ran into the house. I said, Donna, it's alive. It's shooting. You know, And it mm-hmm. did come back and it did pretty well this year, but not what it should have done. Yeah. It was really a, a late start for it. Mm-hmm. So this year... I put pots over top of the stumps before mm-hmm. I put the leaves on. So that it left an air space in mm-hmm. there, the leaves mm-hmm. and, and, and sawdust. I used some shavings from my shop and I, I put them, but I, but I put pots down first and then I mm-hmm. put a box over top. I've got a picture of it, Ken, on my cell phone. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I got a picture. <laughs> I got a picture of that, um, <laughs> that banana. All what I did, I, the mm-hmm. whole series because I, you oh, know. Oh yeah. You wanted to uh, document uh, how, it. How I, Covered my banana. And I how do you my cell phone? <laughs> how to either do it or how not to do yeah, it based yeah. on the results. There you go. That's what you have to do. Is you have to try, right? Mm-hmm. You try mm-hmm. different things each year. That's like uh, you know with the fig trees. People build buildings around them actually to like a little coal frame just to keep their fig trees alive so they can have figs next year. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's a great idea. Well, and I have to do that with mine, Ken. Um, I've got a frame all set up, and I'm just going to put poly. Mm-hmm. over it if it gets cold 
and the poly is reaching up far enough in, uh, that I can actually crack a window in my greenhouse, or not my greenhouse, but in my shop. Right. Just let a tad bit of heat out of the mm-hmm. shop into this to stop that fig from, uh, you know, yeah. from freezing like it did two years in a row now. It's frozen right down. Mm-hmm. Um, We've had two really tough winters. Yeah. They were oh. difficult winters. They were, it was just the consistent cold. But you, you just can't tell what you're going to get. The people are predicting this is going to be a mild winter. So far, so good. But uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, and uh, speaking of that, if you are um, if you have had a rat issue, which mm-hmm. many of us have, well, the rats are out there. Um, if we don't have a chilly, cold winter, because it's the winters that get them, you know. Mm-hmm. Our good friend, mutual friend Don Stoltz is right into that rat patrol. Mm-hmm. And, um, the last couple of seasons, as you say, we've had some pretty, pretty cold weather. Good, yeah. So, um, they, um, and what happens is they, they get kind of nonchalant. Like right now, this is mild weather and they're breeding and they're doing their thing mm-hmm. and they're, and so they're not looking for a place to, uh, find warmth. So they're not really mm-hmm. looking to get into your house or into your garage or whatever. And then if we got a real stinker they would get nailed because they're exposed, right? Mm. Um, However, um, you know, we we do need that cold weather to nail them because they they can't stand that really cold weather. That's why they don't have rats in Alberta. You know, Albertans are so proud of the fact, you know, that Uh, they... uh, they have rats. No, they said we're rat-free. Well, I don't believe it because they've got grain and that's where all the grain rats come from. Anywhere there's grain. Okay. I don't know. They might have. Uh, they might be on top of it. I okay. would. Suggest From what I heard, Albertans don't have. I've rats. seen the biggest rats I've ever seen in my life that came from Alberta. Huge. Okay. Because they just sit and eat and eat and eat on those green cars. They but who knows? Yellow... Maybe the 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 car comes across the uh, BC border and yeah. then the rats jump on there. I don't know. Good question, yeah. though. Do they have uh, Alberta plates? Uh, I don't know. Mm. That's a good question. <laughs> 250-862-2525 if you want to <laughs> phone in and stop this nonsense. We can carry on a little bit here with uh, with uh, with the uh, announcements because we do have a garden club meeting coming up, mm-hmm. the Kelowna Garden Club. Uh, they This will be the last event of the season and of the year. And then, of course, they don't start up again until March. I think it's March when they fire up. Mm-hmm. So they take a couple of months off or whatever. But uh, this will be on December 4th at 6.30 p.m. at the First Lutheran Church at 4091 Lakeshore Road, Kelowna, B.C. Uh, This is going to be a Christmas potluck dinner. Okay, so uh, member or not a member, you can come to the the Christmas potluck dinner. Hard to say that. Mm. Um, There will be a table center competition and a raffle for Christmas garden uh, and food basket whatever that is, a Christmas garden and food basket. Oh, sounds good. I'm sure it'll be mm-hmm. good. And uh, profits, of course, from that will go to the Kelowna Food Bank. A trophy is going to be presented to the winner of the Parlor Show competition for the past year. And this is free to members and their guests. Mm-hmm. But you got to bring a enough food for... for uh, uh, you know, yourself and uh, enough to feed. I, f- I forget what it was, but I, ne- I think they're saying six people. Mm. And it seems like a lot, but the thing is we've got a band that comes and they eat and they don't bring food. Mm-hmm. And we got all sorts, you know, these potlucks. The people that were, the end, you know how you they call the tables out? Yep. People at the end were, they didn't have a lot of choice. So bring more. <laughs> so bring lots, you know. Bring lots. Bring lots of food. And uh, because you can always take it home or, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, but it, but it we ran out a little bit last year. But it was really delicious. It's always mm-hmm. fun to go to a potluck. Yeah, for sure. It's and it's fun. for a good cause, obviously. It's going to be great. The the, uh, the food banks really do yeah. appreciate to get actual oh, cash money whenever mm-hmm. they can. Like, people oh, yeah. donate food. That's great. And it's obviously a big part of it. Mm-hmm. But anytime they can get actual cash, mm-hmm. they can go and buy the things they need. Plus, they get really good discounts from some of the local suppliers. So, mm-hmm. 
it's a it's it's almost better that they get cash than right. But they need both. Obviously, they need a store of food, and then then whatever they're missing, they use the cash to get those those right. extra items. Right. So they so appreciate that. Well, I could give them some lettuce. I've got nice crop of lettuce in the greenhouse, mm-hmm. looking good. I made lots of sandwiches. Mm-hmm. Out of my lettuce, lettuce sandwiches. Well, mm-hmm. that's part of the sandwich. It's, mm-hmm. it's one of the uh, put some onions condiments. in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and uh, tomatoes coming along pretty well in the greenhouse too, Ken. Tomatoes looking pretty good. The tomato plant. I'm only growing one tomato plant this winter. Right. And I haven't put a light on it yet. Mm. And it's looking darn good. It's got three nice bracts of tomatoes formed. Mm. And oh, that's good. See what happens. We'll see what happens. And I've got some young seedlings started for spring. So, Well, if you put that light on, maybe you'll convince it that it's actually spring. That's what I think. Not thinking, fall. You know? going to do that. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. And uh, yeah, staying nice and warm. It's easy to heat this year. It's last year, uh, of course, at this time of year, it was getting down into the yeah, yeah, five, yeah, ten yeah. below mm-hmm. every night. We and, had that wet uh, snow. I think that really yeah, caused did. a lot of damage last year. Yeah, so that's one good tip to people that have your cedars and things like that. To, you know, just you might want to trim some of those tall, mm-hmm. weak branches off, and if it does snow. Uh, get that snow off immediately because otherwise you get the curvature of the spine yeah. <laughs> business uh, and it, it, it stays curved, mm. which is not good. Two five zero eight six two two five two five to get through to us today. I think we will take another short break and give you a chance to get through or would you like me to take a call? Oh, okay. I'll take line one. Good morning. Good morning. Do you have a question Dory. for us, Dory? Hello, Dory. Good morning. Good morning. Um, throughout the summer, I had the big black leaf uh, potato vine, mm-hmm. and I did mm-hmm. ask you if it's possible I should have some potatoes under there. Well, as the season progressed, I noticed the soil kind of rising higher and higher, and when I went to water <laughs> the plant, the planter outside, I noticed the water wasn't even, it was just sort of falling off. There was like the soil seemed to be expanding Well, I had little potatoes under there. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what's the procedure? You you said if it bloomed, it, there probably would be fruit, but and uh, the ornamental ones don't usually, but this one did, and I had a lot of blooms mm-hmm. on this plant. So w- what do they do to start them, like, for the next summer? Well, you can take... Uh, this probably frozen now, right, all the foliage? No, no, I've oh. got it inside. Oh, good girl. It, yeah, oh. and I've taken... I lifted the whole plant out and took some of the potatoes out because it was yeah. getting too big. Right, right. Well, if you've got some little plants, they're very easy to root. You can take some of the foliage there, just some tips, and root those in a in some nice clean potting soil. They root what, very easily. What about uh, the, the the corms? What do I do with them? Eat them. Oh no, they're <laughs> not big enough. They're kind of skinny. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you could you could yeah. use those. They'll grow if you yeah. put them into plant pots, and you can grow a bunch of little baby plants for next year. They'll grow from the root, and they also grow from cuttings, mm-hmm. as Don was saying. Very ah. easy to grow from yep. cuttings, actually. Yep. When do you start those? Like for the season, you don't want them skinny and scrawny. And well, no, thing. but uh, so you're you're just saving the tubers, eh? Yes. Okay. What you they could may, do, yeah. yeah, you could you could just put those into a dry. The key is to dry them right out so that they, you know, you can leave them right in the pot, mm-hmm. but just don't give them any water, and make sure they dry out. And once they're dry, then you could cut off and remove the foliage, and just put it in somewhere where it's uh, maybe a little bit cool, but uh, not freezing, obviously, and just keep them dry through the winter. Then in February, you could bring them out and get them sprouting. And then once oh. they start to sprout, then you could go along and take some cuttings and they'll root right away, so, you know, grow them about maybe four or five inches high or, or so, and then just take about half of that length, make little cuttings, one in each pot, and they'll just root and grow. Oh, really? Then, I've got them in the garage right now. The whole, we had a geranium with it, you see. Oh, so yeah. So I just yeah. put the whole pot in the garage. So well, there you if go. I just let it dry out like I do the geraniums. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, if they're too wet, they, sometimes they will rot over the winter because yeah. being a, you know, a fleshy root like that, a rhizome type root or mm-hmm. tuberous root, whatever mm-hmm. it is, and it'll uh, could potentially rot. But the key is is keeping them dry at this point. Wonderful. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. Thanks Bye. for Thanks for the call. Dory. Yep. Take care. Bye-bye. Uh, 250-862-2525 to get through to us today, and we'll be back with more AM 1150 Carpentry.
Well, here we are again uh, on a beautiful Saturday morning, and it's not really cloudy, but it is cloudy a little bit. A little, the clouds are up high, but they're, they're, you know, we're just having a great day today. And uh, we're going to go back to the phone lines, and Wendy is on the line. Good morning, Wendy. Good morning, guys. Um, we have a privet hedge between, you know, my neighbor and I, and it's getting so tall we can't talk over it anymore. Uh, <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> but the trouble is, every time we say, oh, we've got to cut this down, we've got to cut this down, well, it's either in flower or it's in berry or, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when should, can I cut it down now? <laughs> yeah, well, you can do it now. Uh, with, uh, with privet, you, you, if you do it when they're dormant, so when they don't have leaves, um, anytime, and actually they hold their leaves pretty good, those plants, but they do. <laughs> anytime, anytime through the winter months, you can start to shape it up and give it its shape for next year, but it will respond quite aggressively next spring and it'll put on a bunch of new growth. So that could be good because it kind of rejuvenates it a bit, but you'll need to trim it again almost immediately after it starts to grow. I think you so give it about a month March or something. Uh, you you could do it any time between now and March, and that would okay. be your winter pruning. And then um, after that, it will grow, and probably by about the middle to end of May, you'll want to give it another another trimming. Right. And okay. Then that'll yeah. set it up. Yeah. And then, yeah. Then it, set yeah. it up so healthy. <laughs> yeah. Well, it'll be nice and healthy. And then if you want to slow it down after that, you want to trim it again in around the end of July mid to end of July, and then it won't respond much to that pruning. And then you won't have to prune it the next spring. Because remember that the winter pruning and the spring pruning sort of timing tends to encourage them to get going and grow. And they grow right back to full size, but of course it's nice healthy growth. So, you know, that's that's just a a trick that if you had a, a hedge that was well behaved and all in control you would slowly fade to only trimming it in the summertime, and then it wouldn't respond very much. It would only grow only, say, a foot or a foot and a half compared to when you cut it hard, it'll grow three or four feet sometimes. So, Okay. Um, does it matter if it's, like, in the s- summer, if it's uh, in bloom? No, or- no. Not really. Their their privets are so tough. They right. just you just you just trim them whenever you yeah. get the moment, whenever you can, or whenever you can get somebody to do it. That's when you do it. If you, if you <laughs> in Eng, in England, they're they're pruning them constantly. We had yeah. a, our one of my early uh, jobs as a, as a youngster working for my dad was uh, to prune the Mitchells uh, hedge on Bankhead Crescent. Uh, uh, it was the uh, Harry Mitchell from Harry w- Mitchell's Menswear, mm-hmm. and um, he had specific uh, instructions when we prune his hedge, and that is to make sure that it was pruned in a pyramid fashion, slight pyramid fashion, rather than what often happens is it's skinny at the bottom and fat at the top. He wanted it sl- slender at the top and moving down, so we we trimmed it mm-hmm. about three times a year to keep it at that point and. And that's actually the correct technique is yeah. to have it wider at the bottom than at the top. Right, yeah. right. So Otherwise, he knew that. Yeah, and he knew that. He he taught me that, even though he was a, a suit salesman. <laughs> Harry <laughs> Mitchell's menswear. He was one smart cookie. He was. He, he knew what he was talking about. A great guy. A great. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. You're very welcome, Wendy. Thanks for Thanks. the call. We appreciate yeah. it. Thanks for calling. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, uh, you know, if you're going to keep a hedge nice... Uh, you know, several prunings a year oh, to really yeah. keep them nice and keep them yeah. consistent. I always uh, say mm-hmm. that my description is is that if it's a if it's hedge, if you're hedging a hedge, mm-hmm. that means you're trimming it almost once a month mm-hmm. through the season. Yeah. So you would do it once in March, once in April, once in yeah. May. You do it once a month, and then that thing just forms this beautiful, thick, solid mm-hmm. hedge. If you plant a row of plants and then you just leave them and never prune them, well, that's called a hedge row. It's right. more like a row of plants that are grown as a hedge, but it's not designed to prune. And if you leave them with, the, you know, about five years or so, it, it, or even 10 years, you you probably won't be able to ever recover it to make it back into a hedge, like mm-hmm. a properly hedged hedge. Right. Because it just, they grow like a tree and they start to get all wiry and skinny and yeah. you know they don't they don't grow like they do when you trim it like a hedge you get a beautiful thick hedge mm-hmm. yeah well and they're, they're almost some of the apples uh, orchards now are almost like a row a hedge row almost yeah. Oh, yeah yeah, yeah. The, the, the way they grow them 
Um, interesting, uh, beside the Van Bolen Church, I did some work out there last year for, um, in 2016 for, uh, for uh, Marietta Lightbody's uh, 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 Memorial Garden. And uh, right next door, they were planting a new apple orchard. And, mm. and the orchards aren't like they used to be. They're where your canopy of trees are. These trees are planted a foot apart, maybe mm-hmm. a foot and a half apart. High density. Yeah, high yeah. density. And they're in a row just like like a, like, like grapevines. And uh, they started with just a little tiny stick in the ground with roots on it with a bud. A, a, a bud, a, you know. Oh, <laughs> and the bud grew, wow. and that's what's growing the, the trees. Mm-hmm. Do you know they're going to harvest this year? This this next year they'll be harvesting, mm-hmm. yeah, and that was 2016. Year. Yeah, yeah. So it's, about, it's a three year program. Yeah, it's but they, they because they're so densely planted. Even if you only got two or three apples per tree, that's pretty, you get a lot of apples. Off oh sure. Of and then once you know in the next couple of years they'll be full blast yeah. harvesting. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 they'll be going at her. Yep. yep. You betcha. Well, we're, before we take a break, we're gonna say hello to Pam. Good morning, Pam. Good morning. Good morning. I just uh, tuned into your. Um, discussion about hedges and hedging and hedgerows Mm -hmm. and i'm wondering you were talking about cedar hedges does the same thing apply to boxwood plants that you're trying to create into a uniform hedge with regard to the trimming frequently oh yeah for sure yeah uh it's just uh, because boxwoods are slower growing you've got a little bit more Mm -hmm. leeway because they they're just slow so if on a, a a plant that grows two to three feet a year you you prune it every month but if it only grows two to three inches <laughs> you know or th- you know if it's right. not growing as much it obviously doesn't need as much attention but you still follow the same guidelines okay. it should be just slightly narrower at the top of the hedge than at the bottom and nice sharp uh, sh- shears is the way to go for sure right right okay that's a good tip i wasn't sure we have a uh, beginnings of a boxwood hedge mm-hmm. and i would love it to become a hedge not a hedge row mm-hmm. so um that's a good tip i just didn't know that well the more you oh, prune it pam the thicker know. it's going to get okay yeah. okay good not like hair eh not like not hair, like hair. <laughs> no unfortunately and i can attest to that yeah me too <laughs> okay Alrighty. thanks pam Thank so appreciate All it right. okay bye bye uh, on that note, we're going to take another short break, the last break before our big break. And then, uh, of course, we got a whole hour of garden show after this. Beautiful weather out there, folks. Uh, you can get out in the garden, actually, and do some work. And, oh, yeah. And, yeah. 250-862-2525 to get through to us today. We'll be back uh, with more AM 1150 Garden Show. Well, let's go back uh, to Elaine Cameron again a little bit, uh, hear a little bit more about Elaine and what she was doing in her garden way back to 1950. Here we are. Uh, she, yeah, she um, she was doing a um, couple of things. Uh, on the 19th, she said it was a hard, oh, oh, oh yeah, there we go. That was a hard frost. Then the next day, on the 20th, two inches of snow fell, mostly gone by noon. And then she says no Ooh. garden. When she says no garden, she was into doing something else that day. But mm-hmm. no garden today. Uh, November twenty first, milder. This is nineteen fifty. Milder. She went to Vernon Shoe Shop with Miss Jameson and Mrs. Wilmot and Margaret Carruthers. I knew all those people. Mm-hmm. I knew all those ladies. Um, November twenty second, pruned two pots of spider chrysanthemums and piled up the dead leaves. November twenty third, cold. Took sax manure. I don't know what she meant by that. It's not saxophone like an instrument. It's sax manure. Not, not quite sure what that is. And, and straw to Bill's roses and dirt on two. Her English sometimes wasn't the best, but uh, dirt on two. She as put, well. She piled dirt on as well. The T O O. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So it's interesting how it was going. It was going colder, and then the next day it was sun and hard frost, and then. Next day was milder, and then next day was she didn't have anything, and then November twenty third cold again, and then November twenty fourth mild again. So it was getting cold. These and waves, mild and yeah, back and forth. cold fronts yeah. coming through, yeah. coming through. We like when the cold yeah. front comes right in and then goes right out again. Yeah, on the <laughs> November twenty fourth, she she said, "There's no garden," mm-hmm. <clears throat> and we um, she watered the chrysanthemums. These are in either in the house or in the greenhouse. Uh, cut the Brussels sprouts and the kohlrabi. 
And then she says, Henry hauled a wagon load of wood and hauled the brush and prunings away. November 25th, snow fell in the a.m., later cleared and very mild, melted like spring, Hmm. got moss from the dairy roof and set on the wheel table tray. There's a wheel in the middle of the tray, tray, a table, and she put the moss on that Hmm. for decorations. Pruned the geraniums and set on the tray in the dining room. Hauled the wheelbarrow manure to the south side of the rockery bank. This is all gardening. This is, they're having the same kind of weather in 1950 as we are kind of having mm-hmm. today. Very so. similar, yeah. And, and we'll um, see what happens in the yeah. next week if, if this is a little bit of a prediction maybe. That's right. Uh, we've got to uh, go to the phones, catch Eric before we take our break. Good morning, Eric. Carlos, I uh, just love the way uh, two of you uh, carry on there when uh, there's an idle moment. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. um, I moved into a place where they had a beautiful uh, walnut tree, and uh, we built a new place here, and we had to cut some branches off the tree in order to <laughs> accommodate the house. But unfortunately, uh, the tree's been crying ever since. Is there anything... Mm. Is there any harm to that, or what can one do? Uh, well, it's not going to kill it. What What did you? When did you prune that? Uh, well, I guess in the last uh, month or so. Yeah, interesting. Normally, that happens when you prune early in the spring before the new growth comes on, so it may weep through the winter, but as soon as it starts growing in the spring, that that weeping will stop. Oh, do I? Yeah, okay. it's interesting because, and I learned that from uh, Mr. Galatly, senior. Uh, long passed away now, but uh, back in the early '70s, I was speaking at a at a uh, uh, a, a um, seniors home in uh, or senior center in West Bank in West Kelowna, and um, you know a gentleman asked me, you know, every time I prune my walnut, it bleeds, and I, and and I said, well, you know, it doesn't hurt to bleed. I, I've seen them bleed all the time. You know, there's there's bleeders and whatnot. And anyway, this little gentleman held up his hands. You know, I usually prune my walnuts after they start growing in the spring, about six inches when they have six inches of new growth. Then I prune them and they don't bleed. I said, oh, ah. right. And then at, at the coffee break, I talked to him. He says, uh, and he, he introduced himself as Mr. Galatly. So there you go. <laughs> okay, right from the horse's mouth. Mm-hmm. Oh, there you go. Yep. Well, somebody, somebody also told me too that uh, yep. if it bleeds and it freezes really bad, that sometimes what happens is the branch actually dies. So well, I it could know. be there be could be some uh, frost damage, frost possibly, damage there. Yeah. But um, mm-hmm. yeah. you know what's done is done, uh, Eric, and you can't really change that. Right. So yeah. just no. hang on to your horses uh, through the winter. That sounds like a good philosophy. You know, the trouble <laughs> with life is, you know, you're too soon old and too old smart, right? That's right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you betcha. Anyway, exactly. fellas, have a great day and thanks. Th- thank, thank you, sir. You. We appreciate yeah. your call. Thanks, Eric. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You betcha. And we have May uh, waiting in line here. Good morning, May. Good morning. How are you? We're well, Good. thanks. Good. I have a Christmas cactus mm-hmm. that I bought last year. It's just a little one I got at the grocery store. Mm-hmm. And it didn't bloom, of course, but this year it's blooming, but only half of it. Hmm. Well, yeah. it's, uh, it's, there's probably three plants in there. Eh? Well, Kill? I was just going to ask you, yeah. do you think there's two plants? Yeah. I, it looks like two plants yeah. because the other half is not the Two blooming. cuttings in there. In, in well, so should I split it? No. Uh, you know, there's, there's another way. There's a, something that I notice with my Christmas cactus is that I always have it sitting in front of the window. Yeah. And the buds come on always first on the side of the window. And yeah. that's where the buds come. So then when I get the buds about, you know, maybe a quarter of an inch long, then I rotate it so that the backside of it also gets this equal sun. And then you'll see those buds will produce a little bit faster. Oh. So the, well, there's no sign of any buds on the part that's no not sign at all. blooming. Yeah, and then that could be a different plant, as, as you're alluding you to. I should, should uh, repot it and, and take out that part that's not blooming yeah, or just enjoy like it's it. two plants it's a hitchhiker just enjoy he, he's going to enjoy or she's going to enjoy being with the other one well it'll bloom, bloom at it'll a bloom different eventually. time yeah. it might be a sort of what they call a, a uh, easter cactus easter maybe. cactus uh, which blooms more in the spring oh yeah you might oh. have a double a double whammy there oh you mean i might get uh the other part the, that's not blooming now might bloom, bloom in, the spring. in the spring you bet give oh. that a sh- yeah, or at that's least the joy in, of gardening. In February at some point. The, jo- yeah. the joy of gardening, <laughs> me. Yeah, right. So yeah. I don't need to repot it and split it. I wouldn't. 
I wouldn't. No. They, they can stay in the same pot for a long, long time, those guys. It's just a little pot, you know, four inch. Well, I took my four inch and put it into a six inch, and you've seen them. Mm-hmm. Well, I got yeah, pictures of them on my camera. But <laughs> <laughs> no, you sent me that I mean, picture. Yeah, I said, oh, I did. Yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah. So, yeah. but they are mm-hmm. they're beautiful, and the bigger they get, the more they bloom. So, you know, I if you keep them in a little pot, they don't grow as much. So, with that, if you want a bigger plant, definitely keep repotting it, make, putting in bigger pots, and each year it'll get bigger and bigger. Eventually, so you get this I beautiful. Repot thing. it. Uh, well, you could do it any time in February is usually when you do them. Yeah, so that's yeah. when we do it because the days are starting to get longer and the plants are getting excited about spring and mm-hmm. and then we I put them outside and through the you know through May June July August oh. perfect okay thank you that's May good. we appreciate your call thank you take care thanks Bye for calling Bye. and on Bye. that note we're going to take the break for the news we'll be back with more AM eleven fifty garden. Well, here we go. Uh, I, I just remembered something very, very important that I didn't mm-hmm. talk about at the beginning of the show. I'm so wiped out and mad at the fact that I've lost my cell phone. However, <laughs> here's uh, here's the deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, two days ago, actually on yeah um, Thursday, no, yesterday, yesterday was it? Yeah, it was the sixteenth yesterday, right? Sixteenth. Yeah. Yep. Well, that is <laughs> the birthday of my dear granddaughter Ellie. Um, 10 years old. Can you believe that Ellie is 10 years old? It was November 22nd, 2008, during our 506th show that I announced Ellie's birth. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, welcome Ellie and Marie. And here we are, pictures of her here. My tip of the week that week was... um, Make some 2008 gardening notes while things are still fresh in your mind. I've done that one before. And um, also, the plant of the week was the Calicarpa, Beautyberry. That was 10 years ago. Mm. And uh, what an what a amazing thing. So I just want to wish Ellie, who had her birthday yesterday, a very, very happy birthday. There you go. Uh, and 10. That's a big yeah. deal. I remember being 10. Do you remember being 10, Ken? Mm. Yeah, a little bit. I remember being 10 uh, and thinking to myself, I got nine more of these before I'm 100. <laughs> That's what you thought when you were 10? Yep. Nine wow. more 10s and I'm 100. Wow, there you go. Yeah. Uh, I remember thinking 10. And 10 years old, when you're 10 years old, 10 years is your entire life. Right? Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? It's getting very deep, Don. Does that make sense? When you're 70, which is coming up for me. <laughs> 10 is only one seventh of your life, right? Mm -hmm. And so you turn 70 and uh, 10 years ago, I was 60, right? That, well, I was 58, right? 10 years ago, I was 58. So those last 10 years have gone by like a long weekend. Mm -hmm. Just bang like that. Anyway, Ellie, happy birthday, dear. We're so proud of you and you're such a nice young lady now. Mm. And uh, we, we appreciate every day we're, we have you. We appreciate it. Um, happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday, Ellie. And we're going to go back to the phone lines and welcome Randy to the show. Hey, good morning. Good morning, good Randy. Good morning. Yeah, uh, I just want to say, you know, even though we don't phone in sometimes, uh, quite. A, I mean, there's all sorts of problems with, or questions. <laughs> when you, I shouldn't say problems. They're just an unanswered question mm-hmm. uh, when we're gardening and stuff, but... I've uh, been taking notes and just things that are relevant to what I'm doing. And so you guys talk away, and I tell you what, I pick up some things and I make the notes, and I kind of have a mattering of what I'm doing. Well, it's nice to know somebody's listening, Randy. We appreciate that. Well, yeah. yeah and, and, and those ones with from uh, Mrs. Cameron? Yes. Well, they're generally pretty bang on, and I think the uh, sacks are... Or burlap sacks of I, manure. I think so too. I mean, she's yeah. mentioned that before, but it just didn't. In context, it didn't seem. Uh, you know, when I when when she said this uh, business of um, she said sacks of manure. Though, yeah, she, she said sacks and manure. She said. Or, oh. or just she says. Uh, 
but then sometimes she leaves out articles and, and, and you know, and, yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. some of the... Yeah, and you got to remember, that was 1950, and yeah. she wasn't writing to anyone else. She was writing to herself. Yeah, just writing to herself. So she knew what she was talking about. Um, yeah, well, yeah. yeah took, some of us don't yeah. know what we're talking about. <laughs> it says, took sacks, manure, and straw to Bill's yeah. roses. Oh, Kate. Okay. There you yeah. go. Eh? <laughs> Thank you, Randy. Anyways, appreciate I that. The sacks. I appreciate yep. you guys' show. Yeah. So in other words, <laughs> she took Randy. manure and that to the to and piled it on the roses and put some sacks over top, I guess. Or maybe Around. she put oh, the that's sacks. Possible too. Maybe she yeah. put the sacks first and then I don't know. Whatever. But she used the, yeah. the gunny sack as part of that. Right on. You know you know, when I first moved into my place, mm-hmm. I planted twelve walnuts and mm-hmm. or, or seeds. And only one came up. Mm-hmm. Well, this thing's got about four inch, and, and that was five years ago. Yep. Or, well, four years ago, I guess, mm-hmm. actually. I'm in my fifth. Five years ago. And uh, the the base is now about uh, five inches across. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't trim it yep. until I could walk underneath the lowest branch. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, I, I'm just absolutely amazed. But I didn't know when to prune it until I heard from you guys yep. that you do it in the spring after it's got some growth. And yep. It's just doing wonderful. And every everything, every tip you folks have given works. <laughs> Perfect. Well, that's what we like there to There you hear. go. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> uh, thanks, Randy. <laughs> okay, you guys have a great one. Thank you, you Randy. We appreciate your participation in the Garden Show. We appreciate it. Oh. Okay. And uh, don't well, forget, coming up, guys, so coming up on so the much. 22nd uh, of December, we're going to have a nice big family three-hour-long show. Oh, well, good stuff. You bet. Good stuff. Okay, right. but okay. take care. Take care. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Uh, right on. And um, I, I did mention that um, the Garden Club is going to have their meeting coming up in December. Mm-hmm. It's the last meeting of the of the year, and um, <clears throat> it's always a good one because uh, potluck, and they have entertainment. They had the old-time mm-hmm. fiddlers last time. They might have them again. There's lots of fun mm-hmm. there, and a little entertainment and uh, some, some PowerPoint presentations of uh, various things. Last meeting in November, the November meeting was pretty cool. They had a, a, a real long, nice lengthy uh, PowerPoint presentation on the, the year of mm-hmm. the, the, the Garden Club activities. And it was uh, really, really cool. Uh, mm-hmm. We, um, uh, all the different contests that went on through the year and uh, various people. That, every year the Garden Club um, members will, uh, you know, open their gardens to the mm-hmm. other members uh, and on a particular day and they'll come and visit a few gardens on that day. And... Nice. Um, that was shown as well. It's it's just a great club to belong to. So keep that in mind. And if you want to mm. uh, come to the Christmas uh, open uh, Christmas celebration, the the um, annual one on December fourth, you can do that. Even if you're not a member, come as a guest. You can come as my guest. You can always say, uh, Don and Donna have invited me, <laughs> and you can come as our guest. Make sure mm-hmm. you bring some food though. Guests yeah. have to bring food too. Bring food. Yeah. yeah bring food. And uh, there you go. Two five zero eight six two two five two five to get through to uh, Ken and I this morning on the Garden Show. Uh, we're dealing with some pretty darn nice weather. I planted my last mm-hmm. bulbs at my my last. Uh, <laughs> it's funny, how, you know. I I was so careful with my first bunch of bulb alliums, and I placed mm-hmm. them in there, like, and I put the the various anemones and things in there carefully, placed them in proper depth and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, the last bulbs I had in my greenhouse in the in the in the uh, in the shed in the greenhouse uh, were uh, some snowdrops, galanthus. And uh, I just, the reason they were there, and I didn't plant the first time, I just couldn't figure out where I wanted them. I mm-hmm. wanted the snowdrops to be a, in a spot that way, it wasn't way out in the back 40, which is, I don't really have way out in the back 40, but I wanted it in a, it'd be a spot where I frequented every day. And that is coming out the back, down the stairs, and bingo, right at the base of my shop. Uh, right there, if I'm going to go in my shop, I'll have this cluster of snowdrops coming up in the spring, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice. Well, Ken, uh, I've never been so sloppy in planting. I took my <laughs> shovel, dug a hole. I didn't even place them. I threw the them in the hole. The thrill is gone. Through, through this. <laughs> so it's going to be interesting. You know how we tell, well, four inches deep and you put, you know, and place well, them with the, you know, place bulbs, them with the tip up. Bulbs know what to do. I always, I always say that, you know, the plants know what to do. Yeah. Like we give them a little bit of direction, but they already know what to do. Yeah. They know how to grow. You don't have to, you know, you throw them in the hole and bury them and they all come up and they do their thing. 
Well, they the commercial guys, right you know, you know all the, the bulbs, the daffodils, and the tulips that grow on uh, the on the big open spaces along uh, the, yeah. the highway in the Fraser Valley, right? Absolutely. They don't place those bulbs with the tops up and they just throw them they throw them in the trenches well it comes out of the it comes out of a machine I like know, a brrr, seed drill and yeah. they, they tumble down a tumble little down thing and, and into the thing it, and then the, and then the thing covers the them thing up covers yeah. them up and there they go and they just grow and they're fabulous yeah. so it's going to be interesting to see how these snowdrops come up and i'm sure they'll just be fine yep it'll be just fine and uh a real grouping because I got ten snowdrop bulbs in a bag and I right. plant it. I put them all in one hole. Yeah, that's so. nice. <laughs> I like to do that. That's the way I like to plant. I like to if I want three groups of them, I buy three bags and I put a bag in each each group. Perfect. Because then you get you get some show like yeah, you know immediate show. Yeah, it happens. Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah, yeah it is mm-hmm. very exciting. Um, I think it's time now. We should, uh, there's no callers on the line, so I think we should take a short break. Gives people a chance to go to the phones. And our number to get through to us is 250-862-2525. Ken and I are here to answer your gardening questions. And if you have any input on anything, including, um, you know, if you've got some tips for us, because we've, we've, we're have we've always looking for tips. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, want, I want to know if anybody's ever planted their paper whites in soil like I did this year. Normally, you put your paper white narcissus into gravel and water, right? I plant them just as I would plant a, any bulb in a pot and mm-hmm. see what happens. So see if anybody's ever done that. Maybe you have, Ken. I don't know. Have you? No. Mm-hmm. He's nodding. He's nodding. But on that note, we'll <laughs> discuss that during the break. Um, and we invite your calls. 250-862-2525. We'll be back with more AM 1150 Garden Show. Well, um, it all depends on how you hold the cord on these headphones, whether I have action or not. There's a little miss thing. Now, should I put a note on that for, uh, yeah, for, for, yeah, I will. Um, Jared phoned in, called in, and, and asked Gorinda to, to uh, ask me, or ask us, how to overwinter his olive tree, which is very interesting. I'd like to know what kind of an olive tree he's got. Mm-hmm. And, of course, his... Um, his uh, fig. fig tree. Now, both of those are, tr- are plants that will go dormant in the spring or in the winter, uh, and they will survive very mild winters outside. Mm-hmm. So Ken and I kind of discussed that, and we thought maybe the best bet is to, if you've got a cold carport that may slightly freeze in the winter, but not, you know, any, any cold in, in say, three, four yeah. below maybe. Mm-hmm. Minus three or four. Uh, we're not quite sure on the olive, but for sure the fig could stand that. And um, in the garage or somewhere like that. Um, otherwise, if you keep them in the house, they will go dormant and then they'll start growing again in the house because they'll think it's spring all of a sudden, right? So it's yeah. hard to say. Hard to say. Right. We we think, Jared, you, you should be putting it in a space place where it's cold but not really freezing more than minus four, yeah, minus like, five. Like in a garage. In and a usually garage. you just keep them a little bit on the uh, dry side so that they're not too soggy wet. Yeah. And so if they still have leaves on them, then you, you, you let them grow until they dry out a bit. And mm-hmm. then you start to dorment them or put them in the garage. And if it's just a garage that occasionally the doors open, it's not going not gonna to cause any problems. Mm-hmm. But that would be ideal conditions where it doesn't really get over about 10 degrees Celsius would mm-hmm, be kind of mm-hmm, ideal. Mm-hmm. Just keep them dormant, and then you can bring them inside the house around the end of February and get them started for March, and they can start to grow a little bit. And then once you get to the end of May, you can put them right outside on your balcony, and the fear of frost is gone, and they'll just take off and keep growing. Uh, they always go through a little bit of shock when you're putting them out into the direct sunlight, but they sure need that sunlight in order to grow because mm-hmm. Those types of plants, like they're Mediterranean, right? They really plants, need yeah. that hot sun and, you know, full bright light. So that's yeah. where they want to be is outside. I, years ago, Ken, I had a, uh, a fig in a pot. And um, on a year like this, I would it would still be outside. Mm-hmm. And I'd have it on a trolley and just outside the carport. And if it started to freeze hard at night, I would bring it into the carport, into, yep. the, into the garage. And uh, I was, you know, I was there all winter, so I didn't have to worry about, you know, being out of town at any time. And so that, 
I just remembered it was outside and mm-hmm. oh weather cold front coming in so i bring it inside and as soon as that cold front left and it was nice and mild which we do get through the, in the okanaga mm-hmm. we get some mild winters and this may be one of them who knows uh you can move it in and out because it will take a little bit of frost i just got a message back from jared he's saying it's a spanish olive a spanish olive kim um yeah i'm not sure we were quite interested in in in, in an olive uh, because of Spanish olive sounds like the the, the real olive that you buy as uh, as a you know a, an adornment and a, and also a you know on on your martini could be yeah but anyway we'll Ken's it. Ken's looking that up but that's that's the best way and you can do that with some of these uh, semi uh, marginal plants you can move them in and out through the winter if you've got a little trolley. And that's the best way to manage those because they, they would rather be outside in the fresh air than hidden in a dark garage mm-hmm. or in, in the house where, you know, so that's, that's, uh, that's yeah, my. It's just, if they don't have any leaves on them, then yeah. they're. Spanish, matter. Spanish olive. Look it's that actually up, fruiting. It's a fruiting olive. It's a yeah. fruiting olive. Mm-hmm. Ah, I'd yeah. like a piece of that, Jared. Yep. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the, I'm, I'm just checking if it's, um. Got any Lega- cross tolerance? Just well, no. This the, the species exact yeah. species, and then check and sure. see what the uh, what the um, zone is zoned at. Yeah, they're so all zone hardiness uh, zone zone seven, zone eight sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, yep. seven, seven, eight. So, so that's, they will take a little bit of frost. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They do get a little bit. It's just it doesn't last very mm-hmm. very long out in those parts. Yeah. Well, there you go. When I was in Florida a number of years ago. Um, you know, trust us, go to Florida and it freezes. <laughs> it froze yep. in Florida. <laughs> uh, the, all the, the, the orange farmers had their, their fans out and they were sprinkling water on their orange trees and trying to save them from any frost. And that's what they do. Uh, you know, if, if, if in, in the spring, if, if, if we get a frost and you've got geraniums out or something like that, the best thing to do is in the morning, when, if it's all frosty, sprinkle water on them on that frosty i'm not talking if it's 20 below of course they're done anyway but i'm talking mm-hmm. about those those lighter frosts that they get so you don't burn the leaves putting water on them will uh will uh, you know stop that i'm not sure whether it's warm water or just tepid water or what but uh water of some sort will help the uh, curtail some of the damage that can happen mm. to your your cellular structures yep it definitely works yep. yeah you bet Two five zero eight six two two five two five to get through to Ken and I today, and um, the uh, couple of couple of things that uh, have I've got notes on here to talk about. Um, I talked about the fact we got our rings uh, uh, resized, which is really cool. Um, I wanted to mention too that if you're going to get your uh, tools ready for spring and you want your garden tools, your your shears and your and your uh, shovels, a lot of people don't. Think to sharpen a shovel. Mm-hmm. You know, we used to have a nice big file that we'd sharpen our shovels with. There's nothing better than a nice sharp shovel, and there's nothing worse than a dull one, especially one that's got the, the, the tip of the shovel's bent over a little bit, mm. like, you know, and it won't well, dig those anything. really cheap shovels, well, too, yeah, right? That's right. The cheap shovels, they, they just don't have a, the a tip steel. is too, too bendy. Yeah. It flexes when you try to dig with it. You get what you pay for when you're buying shovels or anything, pretty much. Yep. But a sharp shovel and anything that needs sharpening, uh, go to um, the Precision Sharp at 1171 Gordon Drive, right at the end of Gordon Drive when it hits uh, Clement. And, uh, boy, they are good. They do a good job. What I have in my workshop, Ken, is a box. of A a box. Mm -hmm. And whenever I have something that needs sharpening, rather than run down every time I need it, I'll put it in that box. And I'll take the box of stuff, whether it's some drill bits, some, uh, some, uh, you know, could be router bits, could be uh, saw blades, could be just about anything from the shop, chisels, and I get them to do that sharpening. Now, a lot of folks will do their own sharpening, and that's fine, too. That's a good thing. Mm-hmm. However, if you want to have an edge put on your thing, a good starting edge, so all you do is keep fine-tuning it, mm-hmm. take them down to precision, and they will uh, do that for you. Good place. There you go. Okay, so what we're going to do, because we don't have any callers on the line right now, I think we're going to take a short break and give you a chance to call in, and um, 
yeah, we're just a couple of minutes short of, of the break time, but that's that's fine. We can we can take a short break, and we'll do that. So we'll be back with more AM 1150 Garden. We are back with you on the AM 1150 Garden Show, and as we promised, uh, we are... Uh, going to just mention the uh, the Northwest Flower and Garden Show. And uh, in Seattle, don't forget, you've got to get on the bus. If you are late getting on there, you're going to miss the boat. Not miss the boat, but miss the bus. <laughs> miss the bus. And uh, yeah, so mm-hmm. um, give uh, Sun Fun Tours a call. I'm going to get you those numbers, but we do need to go to the phone lines because that's what this show is about, is the callers. And we care about our callers uh, so much. And, um, so therefore we're going back to our callers and Carol is on the line. Good morning, Carol. Hi there. Um, I have this potted plant I picked up in a grocery store in, um, uh, on the coast on my way home from holiday. It's mm-hmm. called a Siam tulip. Oh, yes. It is so cool and had all these blossoms and some more buds blossomed out. And the last blossom is still beautiful. Mm. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's been two months. <laughs> anyway, it said it's indoor or outdoor, and I really want to put it out. And a lot of the leaves there are dying back now, and the last blossom isn't going to bloom. Mm. Um, is it too too late to put it out? I'm in the up in the snow line on the mm. east side of the airport in Ellison. Yeah. You know what that is? A Siam tulip? No. Yes. No. Ken's going to find out what that is because we don't. We're kind of going. Oh, I don't know what a Siam tulip is. Sure. That's what it was on the label, right? Curcuma SP, it says at the top oh, of that. Oh, yeah. Curcuma, yeah. Um, yeah, that's a that's a good question. But I don't think that they're really quite hard enough, hardy enough for our uh, climate. That's what I was wondering. So I kept it indoors, but I'd live, yeah. like to put it out. It looks, And it said to keep it moist, so I've kept it moist, but I didn't know if I if I made it too moist because it's not looking that good in the mm. lower leaves coming out of the mm. soil. Like, I might yeah. have grounded it. Well, that's a possibility that uh, you've had too much water. I would think it's something you, it, it, was it a bulb? Is it a bulbous thing? I don't know. If it's I hard to say. Yeah. Because yeah. you might have to treat it like an amaryllis. It it's, might be a tropical. Yeah, they're more related to actually to ginger plants, I believe. Oh. So they're going to need to have temperatures that are not too too cold in the wintertime for sure. Yeah, you it's want to 20 keep... degrees to minus 25 centigrade. Yeah, well, I don't. <laughs> minus 30 up here. Yeah, I but don't think I, that. Uh, really covered up with lots of mulch? Well, you know, that's something you could always try. But I would say that you're usually better off when you have a plant that's borderline. You're better off to actually plant it in the garden in the spring, okay. let it fully establish through the summertime, and then naturally go into winter. And then they they naturally will develop their own uh, winterization plan, meaning oh. you know they'll shut down, store extra sugars. Right. They can feel the winter's coming, so they you know they prepare themselves for winter. And then by the time the cold comes, they're completely dormant and they're able to survive. But this oh. plant would definitely need a lot of mulching. But uh, yes. as far as I can see on this one, uh, it doesn't say anything about um, being below freezing. So th- I think it might be a little more tender than what uh, what we might think. But again, um, yeah, you've got the you've got the right botanical name, so that's all good, and that's the key. Is uh, but I would do a little bit more. Uh, it says yeah, it says this is best between twenty and thirty degrees Celsius. So that's above freezing. Well, this says uh, twenty and minus twenty five. Yeah, I don't think so, but it it's maybe it's supposed a, to be. Oh, it's probably dash twenty five. Dash twenty five. Yeah. Oh, oh so that's okay. Better at room temperature. Cold. So, so this means you just keep it as a house plant. Yep. And it should be fine. Well, I'm not very successful with house plants. <laughs> well, things can change. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't uh, keep the keep back off on your water. I think the main thing. Yeah. Yeah. During the winter months. So just let it dry out really well, well for a to, while. to a degree. Don't let it bone dry, sort of thing. But let okay. it let it breathe a bit. Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. It's lot. drowning. Oh, so I'm going to still try and plant it out there in the spring. In and the spring. Really can't really nurture it during the winter. Yeah. I have yeah. some things I brought from the coast when I moved here, and boy, do I stack the mulch on them and the bags mm-hmm. and things, and they've done well. They do really Good well. Yeah. I would be shooting the end of May at the earliest. Okay. So yeah. Okay. All right. So I can just let it dry out now for the winter. Yeah, I would bit. still water from time to time. Okay. Yeah. And uh, for fertilizer, what it doesn't say anything on there about what kind of fertilizer is it? More of a sulfur base? 
Uh, just no, I would just do just like a miracle grow water soluble oh. fertilizer. It's usually right. the way to go, and that's sort of all purpose and it works quite well. And just start that in the spring as well. Yeah, I, w- yeah, I would. Uh, March, okay. yeah. Let it rest. You bet. You bet. Thank you, Carol. And, thank uh, you like for the, the call. The other fellow said, even if I don't call in much, I'm always listening and always <laughs> learning. Thank you, dear, and we appreciate your call. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Thanks very bye. much. Take okay. care. Bye bye now. And we've got Randy. Good morning, Randy. Good morning. I'm back again. No, okay. You know the old bad penny sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, lilacs. When do you trim those doggone things? Lilacs are always after the bloom is typical, but remember that as you get more into more advanced pruning techniques, you can actually selectively remove branches uh, uh-huh. to achieve a bit of a shape that you want. You're not usually well, trimming for size. Remember, you don't prune things for size. You only prune for sort of general shape. Because uh, I, I would very much like to just whack them right back and let them start all over again. Yeah, and, and you can do that. They will definitely shoot back up from the base. They are generally about a two- to three-year program before they'll start to bloom again. Just oh, because that's fine. It's, I'm, you know, I'm a senior. Region. i got time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you can <laughs> there you go. keep an eye on them. And they, they grow. They, they'll grow right back, be nice and healthy, and no problem. So, But it just like, delays the bloom because you've, you know, you've rejuvenated it. You need to let the wood mature a bit. So, yeah, a couple of years, then they start to bud and bloom again. Because I've got one of those peppermint, I call them peppermint, they're white and pink. The, the oh, lilacs, a, a, a two-tone. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, nice. That's but, sensation. Uh, so sensation, beautiful, yeah. beautiful when, they're, when they bloom. But anyways, if I was to cut them back in the next, say, week or so, or next two weeks, is, uh, is that going to affect anything, or can I just go ahead and do it? Uh, they're pretty tough, you know, they're a pretty durable plant, but you might want to wait till, uh, we usually do that sort of thing closer to spring, but they're pretty tough, you know, they'll usually survive. Just what happens is you open up a whole bunch of wounds on the plant and you they all actually have a little bit of overwinter storing uh, plants over winter. When they go into winter, they store sugars in their stems, right? In order yeah. to help them survive the winter, to have enough, uh, food and sugar to survive, and then in the okay. spring when they first grow, they, they use that. So if you if you kind of wait till after the bulk of winter's over, then you're giving them a better kick at spring. Okay, because, I, I mean, I if, if they die, that's fine. If they don't, that's fine, too. <laughs> you can do it <laughs> what whenever you want. Yeah. Patient man. Okay. Randy, cool. thanks for the call. Appreciate it. You bet. Okay. Thanks, guys. You bet. Thanks for calling. And we welcome Addie to the show. How are you doing, Addie? <laughs> Good morning, guys. I'm just fine. I actually was out in my garden today, oh, good but for you. Uh, not for too long. Uh, I've got a couple of geraniums in pots, and they are still blooming. I don't think they're blooming. They're just remaining with what blooms they had, but they're beautiful. I'm wondering, if, when I bring them in as a house plant, how far down should I cut them? Well, if they're blooming, enjoy them as they are right now, Addie. But when they start getting a little bit... Uh a little bit uh, spindly or pale or whatever, you can you can prune them right back into, you know, I prune mine back that I have in the greenhouse. I prune them right back to about six inches. Okay, yeah. so I should keep them outside till because, I mean, they still haven't frozen. Oh, yeah. No, they're under. fine in this weather. Okay, so till what about minus five? Oh, that might be a little chilly uh, for them, uh, yeah. geraniums. So, you know, just this light frost we're having right now is okay. But, uh, no, they could get nailed at minus 5, probably. Um, I would just watch, keep an eye on the, on how cold it's going to get. I hear we're going to get a little bit with the with the skies clearing off. That's when you get your yeah. frost, day, eh? And I yeah. think that's coming up this weekend a little bit. So, so. bring it in uh, uh, during the night and maybe put them it, out during the day? Exactly. You got her. You got her pinned. Good. Yep. Okay, my other question is, I have an orchid that was given to me two years ago. Mm-hmm. It is the funniest thing because it just finished blooming about two weeks ago, and now it set out a new off the main shoot, not straight up but straight down. It set up another eight new um, blossom buds, I guess. Hmm. Nice. Is that uncommon or is that pretty common? Well, it's it's not so much how common it is because each variety uh, has sort of this frequency of bloom that. That sometimes some varieties are really like reblooming right away, and other varieties you have to wait a bit. 
But uh, no, it's just a good thing. You, when you get that to happen, that's that's success. And uh, I just say just enjoy it because it's uh, you're going to get another probably four months or five months of bloom out of that thing. Yeah. Okay, so the thing is, uh, it doesn't have to be. It's got roots coming out over the pot. It just looks like mm-hmm. a mess. Should I be repotting it? Should I cut those roots back? What should I do with them? Well, with Phalaenopsis uh, roots, are they die each year. And so the well, new these ones are died at all. Yeah, cuz those ones are are good. So as long as they're good and nice and fleshy and shiny looking, then yeah. those are all good and that's what they do is they just sort of hang out there and they're looking for areas to anchor themselves on a tree, but they're not on a tree. So they're just going to hang out there. Uh, but okay, when they so- die, if a root dies and it all shrivels up, you snip it out and remove it because they do yeah. generally replace those roots on a approximately annual okay, basis. Okay, so should I put a couple of pots close by with soil and plant the roots? No. No. They, they, no. Addie, remember, these, these Phalaenopsis orchids are not a terrestrial orchid. They are an air root type, uh, epiphyte, epiphyte, epiphyte yeah. type of plant where they hang off trees in crotches of trees in the tropics, and uh, they don't live in soil. And so that's what you're trying to emulate is that con- those conditions. That's why... Orchid mixes are just airy things made out of foam sometimes or uh, peanut husks or uh, really uh, coarse uh, uh, bark mulch. That kind of stuff is um, is what an orchid wants to live in. So I can't really do anything with those roots to produce another orchid. Uh, they, they sometimes, the orchids will sometimes divide, not divide, but send up a little pup uh, off the base there. But the roots themselves aren't going to produce anything. Okay, so because it's grown, it, it had two leaves uh, when I first got it, and mm-hmm. now it's got nine leaves. Oh, good. Like, it's That's really good. growing quite fast, so Excellent. I'm just wondering, will it become root-bound? I don't want to lose it. I'm just wondering what to do with it. Just keep doing what you're doing, because yep. it sounds like yep. uh, you've got it tagged perfectly. And just so remember... not too just remember not where not they grow small. naturally, okay? And, yeah. and that's what you're trying to emulate. And, uh, yeah, they can get awfully big in a small pot, or you can, oh, put, really? you can put them into a larger pot if you like uh, at some point. Uh, I guess spring is a good time for that. But um, generally speaking, that, that's the advice we can give you is don't be putting them in soil for sure. Uh, they they need to be planted in in yeah when I open. said when I said soil I meant uh, the orchid yeah, mix the orchid but, mix uh, I, I just mm-hmm. no I don't want to do anything because I mean it's a beautiful plant in a nice spot but I'm just wondering whether it it will become root bound one day yeah. no no I, probably yeah. not but you, you know people do transplant them as they get older and they get more mature you go up uh, like is yours a six inch pot or a four inch pot. It's a six-inch pot. Okay, so that's a pretty good size pot, you know, for an orchid. So you could, if it gets to be really big and really top-heavy, then sometimes people go to these clay orchid pots, and right. they have sort of like patterns and holes through the sides, and it gives you a little bit of stability and weight at the bottom because when those flowers bloom, they're quite heavy, and they'll pull the plant over a bit. And and I kind of like those uh, pots, orchid pots. <laughs> and they're kind okay, of just so a little more decorative. If if the roots are showing from the like from the leaves down, I shouldn't get some orchid mix and put it on top, eh? No. Like the roots can be exposed. Yep. Yeah, they hang in the air. They're called air roots. And that's what they really? do. Yep. And I've never had a plant like this, so it's very interesting to watch. They are. Thank you very much, guys. Awesome. Really appreciate your show. <laughs> oh, thank you, Addie. Thanks, we appreciate Eddie. your okay. contributions. Yep. Take care. So, talk to you later. Bye-bye. You betcha. Now, we're going to take a short break. We've got Nick waiting online for us, and we're definitely looking forward to t- speaking with Nick. And uh, 250-862-2525 to get through to us. We'll be back with more AM 1150 Garden Show. We are back with you, and uh, we're going to Nick. Uh, Nick, thanks for hanging in there. Are you there, Lee? We yep. can hear you. Okay. What am I doing? I phoned you before. What am I doing wrong to my Christmas cactus? I got two beautiful Christmas cactuses, and now they they used to bloom good, and now nothing. How come? What am I doing wrong? Watering? I I you I don't know. They take they do take a fair bit of water. They they. How, how much water then? Uh, I would be watering. How big is a pot? Pretty big, a fairly big plant, yeah. Big plant, yeah, probably about once a week. 
And what, no fertilizer? No fertilizer at this time of year. But you know what? What makes them bloom is cool nights. They need to have nights that go down to about around 10 or 15 degrees Celsius at night. Yeah. So quite cool. And that's well, what remember you, I told you quite a while ago, and you said to me, put them outside nice and put them overnight. Yeah. But I don't want to do it now. Because, no, uh, no, too late now. Too late now, yeah. Uh, uh, and, sure. and, and, they, and they used to bloom in November, honestly. Yeah. Not really bloom. But they, and Christmas time bloom. And now nothing, nothing. Yeah. Am yeah. I, I'm, uh, well, is the, uh, Nick, is the foliage looking all right? Is it fat or is it getting kind of withered? No, it's good. Okay, it's okay. And I tell you, and right, right in the front of my patio door, is that too cold? Nope, shouldn't no, be. No, they should like that nice, cool air, especially yeah. at nighttime. Uh, uh-huh. so, yeah. Well, Nick, one of the things you could do uh, next year, and that's not right for now, but if you wanted to start feeding it uh, in the spring with, say, 15, 30, 15, something high in the middle number, that yeah. might stimulate some bloom buds next year. Yeah. But I've seen, you know, this has happened before where Christmas, and you've had a lot of experience with Christmas cactus, Ken. Yeah. Um, and sometimes they, find, just, they get stubborn. Well, the maturity of the tip growth, right, is mm-hmm. that whenever my Christmas cactuses are too happy in the fall, they're producing new growth. And any of that new growth is not going to bloom. It has to mature and get a little bit older. And so I know mine. I've got two Christmas cactus right now. One of them was a little bit slower and wasn't doing much this fall, and it bloomed like crazy. But the other one was still growing. Is it blooming now? Mine is already finished, yeah. But I've got one that hasn't started. It's blooming November, and now no November, no December, nothing. Now, is this the first year this has done this, Nick? Uh, the second year. Second year, it's, it yeah. hasn't bloomed. Eh? It might still come along, like I say, with I, with mine. I have one that was really had this beautiful lush growth in the fall, and it's. I know it's not going to bloom, but it will bloom after probably in January. <laughs> I would say um, uh, for Ukrainian Christmas. Yeah, yeah there that's you go. Right. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Okay, Nick, appreciate the call. Yeah, bye take bye. care. Good okay. luck. Bye bye. And our last caller uh, to, for today will be Joe. Good morning, Joe. Good morning. Thank you for your show. I always enjoy it. Thank you for um, mentioning that. My problem is my amaryllis. It did not bloom this time. Do we have to repot that when it starts again? Does, does the soil get tired or something? Well, there's there's tricks to it. Uh, they do need to go through a dormancy, Joe. You have to emulate their conditions in a tropical uh, place. Um, and what you do is... Uh, is uh, keep, keep it in a pot, treat it as a house plant, enjoy it, enjoy the foliage and that. And then in August, um, you um, I plant mine out in the garden, and then in August I dig it up, chop it off, and make it go dormant and let it cool for a little while. I even suggest putting them in a bag in the in the in the fridge in the refrigerator, not the freezer, but the refrigerator in the in the crisper part. And leave it there for two, three, four weeks even, and then bring it out, repot it, put it into a pot. And uh, it should bloom for you for Christmas. Now, I have a sheet on amaryllis. If you want to email me, uh, okay. I can I can give you that sheet. It's uh, that I wrote. Uh, it's Dawn at the Garden Expert dot com. Okay. I'll and and then that. yeah, and give and I'll send you my sheet. I uh, thank you. Okay, Joe. Thanks for the call. Appreciate bye it. Bye bye. Bye bye. Right, and uh, so we're getting right down to uh, the uh, very short end of the stick here, Ken. Yep. Um, uh, but we still have a little bit of time just mm-hmm. to mention a couple of things. Uh, uh, certainly the, um, garden club meeting on December 4th is coming up. We want to remind people of that. And there's a couple of weeks yet till that comes up, but, uh, still, um, want to mention that. Um, and also, um, I still, you know, would appreciate if anybody has any clay pots and old clay pots kicking around that you don't need, I am interested because I'm converting all my plants to clay pots in the greenhouse i think it looks nice too got the clay pots so i've purchased a lot of them but i'm thinking if somebody has some sometimes people have clay pots kicking around that they don't Mm -hmm. need and and wonder what to do with them um rather than chop them all up and make drainage in the bottom of pots which was my one of my first jobs for dad was to smash up clay pots Mm -hmm. no Mm -hmm. no uh, glasses no safety glasses nothing dad just handed me a hammer and a big pile of clay pots and i just banged away no (laughs) safety glasses you know yeah Yeah. and then we'd hop in the car then we'd hop in the car no no seat belts two of us in the front leaning up against the front windshield back when canada (laughs) was great (laughs) yeah that's where you go okay well we're getting very close to the end here and um just a reminder that uh, on the 22nd of december Mm -hmm. 
that's uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's the, the last show of the year. Yeah. We're going to have a three-hour extended Christmas show. We're going to have some guests on, of course, as we usually do. Uh, Brian Mitch is going to call in. Valdi said he wants to call in. Nice. And we've got a number of people that are going to call in, but we also invite your calls, too, and we can just be all wishing everybody a Merry Christmas and all that stuff, and it's, it's just going to be a nice show. Mm. And, uh, okay, so, um, and also, um, the... Uh, I was, oh yeah, I wanted to finish off the year of 1950 with Elaine Cameras. We'll, we'll finish the show off with a little bit of that, right? Sure. Okay. Um, so on the, uh, 25th, um, snow fell in the AM. Oh, no, I've done the 25th, 27th, heavy rain on the 27th of November, 1950, heavy rain hmm. all through the night, lovely spring day again. <laughs> hauled barrel manure barrels of uh, manure to the rockery and the next day on the 28th hauled manure to the rockery top and west bulb bed 29th picked brussels sprouts and cut something i can't see what that was and uh, and and did some something with her chrysanthemums and then 30th cold and raw snow in the evening cleared the windows I guess she had to scrape the windows from the frost. Mm -hmm. So there you go. It's very similar to what we're experiencing uh, today at this uh, point in time uh, in history. You know, every year is different. We've had winters where it's extended right through, uh, right from beginning of November, right through to mid-February, cold, 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 Mm -hmm. snow, snow, snow. And then we've had winters where we barely get any snow. And, uh, those are the winters you have to be a little bit careful. Well, we always have to be careful, but when you don't get any snow, that's often reflects the snowpack, but we don't have a lot of snow in the, in the mountains. Mm. So we got to be very careful with our water. Uh, it's the snow in the mountains that keeps us wet in the Okanagan. Absolutely. If we had to rely on the rain, not going to happen. Nope. Uh, 11 it's got inches, snow. You know, it's 11 got inches snow. of rainfall each year yep. and 14 inches of evaporation. Hmm. So that tells the tale. If it was just rain we were relying on, it'd be pretty rough. Yep. So we rely on that snowpack up in the hills and then the, the reservoir system that we have to keep the water at bay till we need it, and it just kind of flows down. And mm-hmm. uh, they've done a pretty good job over the years for that, but uh, still, we need the snow. And if we don't get the snow, if it's not raining or snowing down here, it's probably not raining or snowing up in the mountains, so there you go. Well, on that note, uh, we are going to give the tips and plants of the week, and then we're out of here. My tip of the week is book your seat on the most popular garden bus tour in the valley. Time is running out, so call Sun Fun Tours today. And, uh, yeah, is it Sun Fun Tours? Yeah, Sun Fun Mm -hmm. Tours. And uh, then we will uh, give you my plant of the week, and that is the crassula or jade plant. Very easy plant to grow, easy plant to root, so it's a it's a good one to have. It needs a kind of a bright spot in the house. Uh, you yep. want to have a nice bright a spot. A little bit more. dry through mm. the winter. Yep. Yes, I also have a tip and a plant, and my tip of the week is that uh, whenever you're transporting plants outdoors at this time of year, you have to really be careful because a lot of the tropicals, they really can't handle any kind of cold at all. So just put them inside of a plastic bag and inflate the bag and tie it off, and there you go. you got to bubble a nice warm air to transport your plant. Uh, my plant of the week was a balsam fir, which is just uh, one of the Christmas tree types. Lovely fragrance and is also available in a uh, essential oil, which is really kind of cool. Uh, very beautiful, very fragrant, nice tree. That's my tips and plants for this week. Remember to check colonagardens.com. Okay, and our Shy Go quote of the week this week is, Clays are party centers. They have lots of negative spots that attract the wandering positive ions. Ooh, fun. That sounds <laughs> That's exciting. Shy <laughs> fun. Clays are party centers. There, there you go. Okay, on that note, we're going to say goodbye, and we will be back next week with more AM 1150 Garden Show.